So in this particular box, we actually have two separate circuits that we're dealing with, which makes it a little bit more complicated to follow what's going on. So we're just going to wire them uh, one circuit at a time. And really, all you have to pay attention to mainly is keeping them or treating it as if you almost had two separate boxes with one exception that I'll talk about in a little bit. So I'm just going to start by stripping back the remaining sheathing for these couple that aren't done yet. I'm also going to clip this one off to uh, match the length of, of the rest of the wires approximately. And we're just going to use a basic utility knife to strip the sheathing off. And you need to have at least a quarter inch of sheathing inside of the box itself. But typically like having closer to a half an inch is a little bit what I prefer. Score right down the center of the cable being mindful of where your hands are. And that's going to uh, keep your blade right along the bare copper wire, which you can't really damage anyway. So you just score through that outer sheathing and then you can pull it back pretty easily. And then in the back of the box here, once we have that sheathing pulled back, we can pull it tight and take your utility knife, push back with your finger and just cut it off carefully, like so and get it out of the way. The main thing that we have to pay attention to with two separate circuits being in this box is keeping those separate circuits actually separate. And the way we can help ourselves not screw that up is by making some labels. So see these labels that I made right here? I have sub number two, sub number two, main number six. And that's because this breaker that's feeding this uh, power source is from the sub panel, breaker number two. And this one right here is from the main panel, breaker number six. So I'm just going to slide those over all the wires involved, both the hots and the neutrals, so that we can keep track of which circuit is which. You can see that I've done that on some of these cables already. So this one right here is going to be on the sub panel circuit. And then if you want to take the time to go ahead and mark on these labels also what these individual wires are for. So this one is going to be feeding the north recess lights. I'm just going to abbreviate it. And then this one over here, going to label that as south cans. Okay, so I've got all these wires labeled in here. You can use little pieces of sheathing like what we've used uh, right here today, or you can make some labels with a label maker. I, I hand wrote all of my labels for my the original project, which was really dumb looking back, but anyway. So with there being two separate circuits, we obviously have those marked clearly on here. Main number six means it's in the main panel and circuit breaker number six. And then these four cables over here, I'll say sub number two, which is for sub panel uh, breaker number two. So it's all clearly marked as to which circuits are which. Now on the other side of the labels, I did mark a little bit more as far as what this specific wire is for. This is for the north can lights in the basement living room. This is for, this is the home run, I think. Yep. This is the home run power coming in from the panel. And then over here we have our south living room cans. And then on the other side here, we have our ceiling fan light for the living room. And then these are our power cables coming in and going out. I don't know for sure which one goes where, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, we treat these as separate boxes with the exception of the ground wires. We're gonna tie all the ground wires together first and that's going to be the same as if it were a regular box. So we'll bend all of our neutrals and hot wires up and out of the way while we work with the ground wires. So we're working with 14 gauge wire here and the wire nuts that we're using are marked to take up to five 14 gauge wires. So we have three, six, oh actually seven. So we have seven, so we'll put four together on one side plus a pigtail. With 14 gauge wire, I like to just kind of get them all kind of lined up and then clip off anything extra to get them nice and even. And then we can take our wire nut without pre-twisting. Pre-twisting is not really necessary for 14 gauge in my opinion. I like to twist it until the rotation starts to just come down past the collar of the wire nut a little bit right there, but I like to quit. I don't like to thread it back very far. So half inch past the edge of the wire nut and we're good to go. Now we can do our second batch. So this is our one group of five wires, our pigtails coming over to connect to our additional three wires, but all of the devices that we're gonna be installing inside this box also need to have 
pigtails. So we're going to use another pigtail because we're going to be maxed out again. One, two, three, four, five wires. So we have our two sets of ground wires there so far. Now we need to take this pigtail and create three more. So we're attaching three more pigtails that are going to serve the three devices that are inside of this box. So we have three switches, so we need three ground wires for those three switches. So now we're going to roll all of our ground wires into the back of the box at the same time, leaving our pigtails a little bit long for now. Now we'll take our ground wire pigtails and then run them over to where the switches will be utilizing them. Today we're using bare ground wire. However, you can also use insulated green ground wire if you want to, and that helps a little bit with when you're assembling your boxes later because you don't have this bare copper wire that could potentially short up against something. It's not really a big deal, but it's a little improvement you can make if you so choose. Now, all of the ground wires from separate circuits can be tied together, but that's the only uh, types that can be tied together. Our hots and our neutrals need to stay separate for separate circuits, and that's especially important for these arc fault breakers that they have now. If you hook two neutrals from two different circuits together, the circuit will actually trip right away. So now we're going to basically wire up our two separate sets that involve our two separate circuits, one at a time. We'll start with this main number six and get this one wired and ready to go. These wires right here are the power coming in and going out of this box for the main number six. And then these wires right here go up to the ceiling fan in the middle of the room. For my pigtail wire, I'm just stripping the outer sheathing off of a piece of 14-2 Romex. And that's actually cheaper than buying like individual rolls of wire. So just uh, strip it and then you can use the conductors inside for your pigtails. So we're actually gonna deal with our neutral wires first. And this is just going to be a standard single pole switch going up to the ceiling fan or light in the center of the room. So we don't need any uh, like pigtail for our neutral. The neutrals are just gonna be tied together and then pass through up to the light. Whenever you've been dealing with wires that have been all twisted up, try to straighten them out as much as you can. They don't have to be perfect, but it'll help with getting the wire nut on there and making it a good secure connection. This is one of the reasons why WAGOs or the push to connect connectors are becoming more popular is that when you go to change things in the future you don't have to deal with the wires being all twisted out of shape. We are actually going to do just a tiny bit of pre-twisting on this particular set for that same reason of it just being more tricky and then we'll trim them all off to the same length. And now we can put our wire nut on. Now we're going to roll those neutrals back into the box for this first half. So I'll try to just roll them onto the side where this first circuit is going to live. And now we can deal with our hot wires. Now we will need to add a pigtail for this. This is our power coming into the box. And then we have power going out to another location. So those are tied together. So we need to add a pigtail right here uh, that will go to the switch and then the switch will send power to this wire. So our pigtail right now is extra long so what I like to do is roll this into the box like so. Once you get that tucked in well then what I like to do is take my pigtail wire run it over to the device that the pigtail is for and then bring it out and snip it off at the same length. Oftentimes I'll use uh, something that I have handy. Uh, the handle of my wire stripper is about four inches long. You can kind of use that as a gauge to determine how far uh, out you want your wires to come past the face of the box. So our first device is ready to go. This wire right here is a little bit short. If this was all new, I would have ran this out a little bit further, but it is what it is. So then I like to take my ground wire and twist around it like that. And then we can safe these off as well, so put wire nuts on the ends of these black wires if we want to, just to test to make sure that the circuit is working properly. Then you can actually energize it, but we'll come back to that. All right, we're on to the second half of the box here now. We're gonna do the same kind of order of operations. 
We'll start with the neutral wires and tie all those together first. I'll go ahead and strip back all of the conductors at the same time, stripping them back to about a half an inch. Pull all the black wires up and out of the way. Now if you wanted to, you could add a pigtail for these neutrals so that you, so instead of putting four wires together right now, I'd, I'd add a fifth one, which would be extra. And you would use that potentially if you're ever going to like install a smart switch or a motion sensor switch, sometimes those require a, a neutral wire. You can always add it later, but sometimes it's nice if you're thinking about doing it anyway, as far as a smart switch or something like that, to just go ahead and add one just in case. In this case, we're pretty sure that we're not gonna do that, so we're going to just put these four together. And I just wanna emphasize one more time that these neutrals are tied together and they are not connected to the neutrals from the other circuit. Neutrals need to be separate. Grounds together, neutrals separate. Now we'll go ahead and roll this, these neutrals back into the box. All right, so this wire right here is going to the cans on one side of the room. This one right here is power. I believe that's our home run coming from, coming from the panel. And then this one right here is our other switch. So our switch wires are up here on top or sorry, our other set of recessed lights. So recessed lights, recessed lights. And then this is power coming from the panel, like I said. And then this is power going out to another, to feed another box. So we're just going to add two pigtails to these two wires so that we have power feeding each one of what will be single pole switches. If you have a loop of wire like this, just take and leave it as a loop for now. And then you can trim the pigtails to the correct length when you're ready. It's handy to get a few red wire nuts to have on hand and then we wouldn't have had to have made quite as many separate bundles of ground wires inside the back of this box. Okay, so there's that. We'll roll that back in. And now we have these two wires, which are is our feed power for each switch. So that'll just go down like that. And then you kind of get them where you want them. You can snip off the extra. I like to take the ground wire, just kind of wrap that around there, indicating that that is a set that will be going to each one of the switches in this box. So with it being a single pole switch, it doesn't matter which wire goes on which terminal. Uh, you can, if you want to keep it like uniform, uh, you know, have your feed power coming in the bottom right here. So if we look at the wires and where they go in the back here, one of the wires is going up to the actual cans and then the other one's the feed power. So put the feed power here and then go into the cans on top. But it could be either way and it wouldn't affect anything. Like I said, if you had a motion sensing switch or a Wi-Fi switch, uh, those have a neutral wire. So you would have to add a neutral wire into that little bundle right there. Which is why I was asking because if that was the case then we'd leave a neutral wire out with this set in case you needed it. Because one switch will be up and off, and the other switch will be nope. down and off. With a single pole switch, on is on, off is off. Always. So if there's power coming in here and going out here, it doesn't change the position. It still doesn't matter. It's really? irrelevant, yeah. Because it's either closed or open. Closed or open. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one's on which terminal. Three pole switch is probably really different. Three way switches, you need to have your power coming in on the common. It's like a black screw. Power comes in on the black screw, and then you have travelers, two travelers on the top, and then those don't matter which ones they can go to. And how does the neutral ever tie into anything? The neutral goes straight up to the lights, so all those white wires that you're tying in up there are always connected, all the way back to the panel. Always. And then when you turn on the power, it sends the power to the black wire, which completes But power the never gets into the white, then? Power, power travels back to the panel on the white. So when I, when I turn the lights on, Power comes from that black wire through the light bulb into the white wire in the back of the panel. That's right. Yep, exactly. So we're going to go ahead and install this switch here so you guys can kind of see what we're shooting for. When you're installing a switch and you're going to be using the screw, strip back closer to three quarters of an inch of sheathing. And then we're going to bend a little loop on the end of each one of our wires. We're going to put our incoming power on the bottom screw. It wouldn't have to be, it could be on the top screw as well, but it's just easier to keep track of. And then our outgoing power, which would be to the ceiling fan. Right now it's actually hooked to a temporary light on the top screw.
And then for our ground wire, same thing. Just bend a loop, connect it onto the green grounding screw. And then when I put the switch in, oftentimes I'll kind of like rotate it as I push it in. It kind of does a nice job of putting the wires back into the right spot. And then you always want to fully seat the switch just by pushing it back with your thumbs, uh, slightly offset of where the screws are going to go so that all the wires are compressed as far as they need to be. Now I can turn it and put it in the way it's supposed to. Now I'm going to strip back the remaining two black wires here that we have that I haven't stripped yet. Now I'm going to connect each uh, set of these wires as if the switch was turned on. So normally when the switch is off, these wires are disconnected. When the switch is turned on, they're connected. So if I just go ahead and wire out these together for now, that allows me to test the circuit without having to install a switch. And then you can make sure that there are no wiring problems when you turn on your breaker. Especially if it's arc fault, you'll know right away if there was some kind of a problem. So I only twist this just enough to kind of make the connection, but we don't want to actually twist the wires down uh, and spiralize them or whatever because we will be taking that wire nut off and putting a switch in once the drywall is complete. We put this switch in just because it's for temporary lighting. So there's where our two single pole switches are for our recessed lighting. Now we're just going to take and roll these back into the box. And you want to keep the wires away from the outside edges of the box because if they come and use a roto zip when they're cutting out the holes for their drywall, they pop the roto zip through, they go to the edge of the box, and then they go to the outside of the box and route it around. And so when they pop it in, they should try not to push it in too far. But if your wires are like pushed way out, then it's even more likely that they're gonna buzz one of them off. Let me know if there are any things that you would have done differently or suggestions or tips that you might have. Oftentimes you'll find a lot of really good information in the comments from people that are a lot smarter than me. So just be 